very good. Okay, so I've got myself this massive buttload of non-GMO seeds. I'm going to be planting those here. Also got some oregano. This wasn't included in here. It's, you know, over 50 varieties. There's what came in this and then some from another pack. So I got quite a bit in here. I'm not going to be planting them all, obviously, but let's take a look at what we got. Okay, this is a massive freaking buttload of seeds here. I mean, just freaking amazing, everything that's in here. And um, as for some of the varieties, <clears throat> I'm going to read it off the back here. You can enjoy looking at my seeds here while I read it. Um, <clears throat> some of these are hard to pronounce. Beet Cylindria, Beet Early Wonder, Broccoli Green Sprouting Calabrese, Brussels Sprouts, Long Island Improved, Cabbage Copenhagen Market, Cabbage Golden Acre, Carrot Danvers, <coughs> Carrot Scarlet Nantes, Cauliflower Snowball Y Improved, Celery Tall Utah, Collards Georgia Southern, Collards Vates, Corn Salad Dutch, Cumber, or excuse me, Cucumber Market Moor, Cucumber Boston Pickling, Dill Long Island Mammoth, Eggplant, uh, excuse me, Eggplant Black Beauty, Eggplant Long Purple, Kale Dwarf, Serbian Kohlrabi Purple Vienna Lettuce Black Seeded Simpson Don't oh! Lettuce Bronze Mignonet Lettuce Butter Crunch Lettuce Oak Leaf Cantaloupe Hales Best Jumbo Melon Hearts of Gold, Mustard Greens, Florida Broadleaf, Okra Clemson Spineless, Okra Emerald, Onion Burgundy Red, Onion White Sweet Spanish, Parsnip Hollow Crown, Bell Pepper California Wonder, Pepper Early Jalapeno, Pumpkin Small Sugar, Radish Cherry Bell, Radish French Breakfast, Rutabaga American Purple Top, Spinach Bloomsdale Long Standing, Squash Early Prolific Straight Neck. Who comes up with the names for these things? Squash Table Queen. Sounds more like a command than a vegetable. Zucchini squash dark green. Swiss charred ruby red. Tomato red beefsteak. Tomato floridad. Tomato red cherry large. Turnip purple top. Turnip shagoan. As opposed to shalevan. <clears throat> watermelon Black Diamond. Ah, if only there were diamonds and watermelons. Wouldn't that be great? Watermelon Crimson Sweet. So I have made my selection of the first eight I'm going to start with. And they are as follows. Yep, you're reading it. The Cowboy Light Tobacco. I'm going to try growing a little bit of tobacco plant. I obviously didn't get that in the in the heirloom seed package. Mammoth Long Island Dill. Gotta love dill. My dad would absolutely want to just Ew, he would be mad if I didn't select tomatoes. So tomato, beef steak red. Spinach. 
spinach dip is freaking awesome and is very expensive in the stores. If you can make your own for free, all the better. Radish. My dad loves radishes. He's like, wow, like words cannot explain just how much he loves radishes. So he would be very mad if I excluded these. So these are included. Oregano. This stuff is good with just about anything but ice cream. <laughs> and it's a pretty ground cover on top of that. Hopefully that grows well. Onion, of course. We already have onions growing, but I'd really like more. We're like onion freaks over here, so the more onion, the better. And lettuce. Always great with any kind of sandwich, so cool. I think I've made a pretty good choice here, and now to go get planting. So we have our four bags of dirt, three down there, and another one on the other side of the yard, and I'm gonna go get the plant pot. Now when it comes to growing your own plants, uh, lighting is key. So if you uh, can't grow it outside, and you don't have a window with a good southern exposure, then uh, lights such as these big boys, uh, these are full spectrum. They take in about 60 watts and put out the equivalent to 350. So these things are pretty freaking awesome. As you can see with our hydroponic setup, they seem to do pretty well. And our plants are just growing wonderfully and, and awesomely. Oh, and a uh, side note. There's that Oscar that Tony gave us. And um, there's the Red Devil Cichlid. The Red Devil Cichlid's a female and the Oscar's a male. And um, they seem to have paired off, surprisingly. Because that, that Red Devil Cichlid wouldn't get along with any other cichlids. Not even any other Red Devils. Very combative. But, um... This little pimp Oscar here just put a few moves on her and she's like, okay. So, I don't know if they're going to lay eggs or not and if they do, if anything will come of it. But, um, you know, at least she's got somebody to deal with and he's got somebody to deal with. So, that's cool. I feel it all worked out. And, um, we're running these, uh, Badass uh, filters up here. 350 gallons an hour for each of them. That's a total of 700 gallons an hour in filtration. See, look at that. Oh, ain't they cute? He's getting all cozy. Red Devil and an Oscar. I never would have expected it. Anyway. Moving right along to plants. So, here's a bunch of our pots, of course, that um, we've been saving up, and uh, gonna put some of these to use now. Water retention is, of course, very important, so I'm gonna be using some wood chips from the tree that got uh, drilled out out in front uh, last week. So, wood chips are good for water retention. Very important for plants, especially if you're not able to water all the time and every day. Because the more water can be stored up in the soil, the better. And wood chips definitely do this very, very well. So I'm rinsing out these pots one by one. And here's the first one, and I'm going to put these wood chips in here. And for the rest, I'm going to add soil. So here we have our soil in the form of compost. And I'm going to be mixing mulch in with it as well. All compost is is something that turns into soil anyway. The same as uh, mulch. You know, leaves die and dry out and turn to soil and that process also creates fulvic acid which is 
extremely good for the plants. Wouldn't be surprised if they took a bit of horse and cow poo and mixed it in here too. That's also fertilizer that turns to dirt. So uh, if that's in here, that really wouldn't surprise me. Now I've mixed in some mulch from behind the bushes in with the dirt. Because that's where we stash our mulch from garden waste and all that. So I got that mixed in there and it's time to plant the seeds. I'm going to start with the oregano. And it says... This will cover 2,000 square feet, spread seed on surface of soil, or lightly rake in seed, etc, etc. Okay, cool. Let's do that. I'm going to use a rake on a plant pot, but I think my fingers will suffice. Going at it very gently. Cool. So there's the first pot. We have our oregano. And for pot number two, Dilmon, I have chosen you. Okay. Mammoth Long Island. Pot number two. And now there are two. And now we are on pot number three. Now we're going to use the tomato beefsteak red. Now tomato plants can get a bit large, so I'm only going to put four seeds in here. I'm going to space them out. So that's the third pot, beefsteak tomato. And then there were three. Next item on our list is spinach, noble giant. Okay, I'm not sure exactly how noble or giant this gets or how far to space it apart, so I'm just gonna sprinkle a few in here and, and cover it up, like, you know, not too much but not too little, that sort of thing. And now there are four pots. I may as well do just a quick outdoor pond update. Show everybody how things are. Just for fun. There's our fishies. Just goldfish in here for the moment. We haven't put the tropicals in yet. Damn, there's a lot of them, huh? This water is actually pretty clear, but the reflection of the algae through the water growing on the sides makes it seem as if it's not. We've already taken samples out of this water and looked at it in a, you know, clear glass uh, container. And the water is actually pretty clear. Everything's starting to come really good. And we got mint growing in there. Uh, we want to dry that out and uh, mix it into some vanilla ice cream and see how that goes. <laughs> that should be cool. And that's our yellow iris. It hasn't bloomed yet. Hopefully this year it will. And we also bought some more ivy. Demonstrate how well the wood chips retain water. These are extremely moist and I d dug down maybe a couple inches into the wood chips and um, these are extremely moist. And on the surface the wood chips are dry as a bone because the sun is incredibly hot. 
but we can see, hopefully we can see in this camera here, how much moisture there is. I hope it's apparent anyway, it's hard to tell on this little LCD screen. But definitely easy to tell for me here. But hopefully you can see the difference between the wood chips before and these and how much more moist they are. So this, this is evidence that wood chips hold uh, water like crazy. Water retention, always a good thing. Ladies and gentlemen, it's plant pot number five. And in plant pot number five, we're going to be putting some radishes, white icicles. Oh boy. I sprinkled those red, reddish looking radish seeds there. Not too much, not too little. Just gonna gently put the dirt over and there we go. And then there were five. And now Dad is back home and we are about to deal with the sixth pot here. And this is going to be the onion, red burgundy onion here. So we'll see how those go. The asshole is returned. Hmm. Oh, by the way. Just kidding. What? Oh, by the way, just so you know, um, remember the other day when, when Taylor kind of jetted out early? Mm -hmm. uh, the reason Taylor jetted out early, she was telling me, is because um, her stepdad, Charlie, who's a real fucking prick, by the way, is a control freak and doesn't like me uh, talking to her. Aww. Oh, but the problem is, is she's a grown-up and she's married and she has a husband named Brian and Brian likes me too. Charlie can go fuck himself. She, she had to take a little break to go you, tell you, Charlie. You need a papa doodle. Huh? You need a papa doodle on your face. Uh, anyway. Big white head. Anyway, um... Big fat one. Yeah. So it's as big as your head. She needed to take a little break to go tell Charlie to go fuck himself. Yeah. And um, I said, oh, well, you know, um, you, you talk to my dad, too. So, um, you know, if he doesn't like that, uh, me and dad could get on Skype with you and Brian and Charlie, and we could all tell Charlie to go fuck himself together. Hi, dad. We How can, are you, dude? We, we, can, we can all sing the go fuck yourself oh, song. Dad. What's the matter, Dad? You uh, want her all for yourself. Stepdad. You. Yeah. She, you ever heard of freedom? Yeah, maybe. Well, she's a free person. Well, he's a Nazi. She's not a slave. He's a so Nazi. So think about it, dude. Yeah, that's only a stepdad, not even a real dad. Now tell him to step out. Man. Hey, Charlie, if you got a problem with me or my dad, talk to us about it. Otherwise, leave Taylor alone and go fuck yourself. Anyway. Now, uh, moving on, back to the, uh, the seed hey, work here. Alright, uh, give me a minute. Anyway, so I'm going to plant the onion seeds. Let us begin pot number seven with lettuce. Alrighty. Prize head lettuce. Mm, I guess we'll see how prizey it is or not. And now there are seven, so the last pot we have to do is the tobacco. No, sorry folks. Not wacky tobacco, just like this pot is not that kind of pot either. We're talking about cowboy tobacco, you know, the nicotine variety. Now I put in a double dose of um, the wood chips for um, better water retention and um, increased uh, fulvic acid production. Because from my research about uh, growing tobacco plants, uh, they suck a lot of nutrition out of the soil, actually. So, um, really need to pack it in with nutrients, and I really don't want to use chemical fertilizers and folic acid as some of the best shit you can deal with with that, and that produces itself naturally when you have things like rotting wood and so on and so forth. So, um, that's all good there. Now, it's said that um, these type of seeds are sun-activated. So you just want to kind of take and, and sprinkle them across the the top and just kind of gently do that. And make sure they're as close to the surface as possible because when the sun's beating down on them, that's, you know, how they activate. That's their main trigger. So um, I'm going to need to do that that way. So we'll see how this turns out. That'd be pretty cool. And there we have the last one, tobacco. So all eight. 
Now, I'm not advocating smoking or anything. Don't get me wrong. But, I do have a funny little song for you. Hello, and welcome to the Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corporation. If you reach this number in error, you're in luck, because we're about to serenade you. If you've dialed correctly, you're in luck, because we're about to serenade you. Oh, the tobacco plant is a lovely plant. It leaves so broad and green. But you shouldn't think about the tobacco plant if you're still a teen. Because tobacco is a big person's plant, and that's the way it should be. So if you're under 21, go and climb a tree. Oh, the tobacco plant is a lovely plant, and that, my friends, is no yarn. We let it ripen in the field and hang it in the barn. <laughs> if you think that really sucks, we agree. Write a better song about the tobacco plant and we'll use it. Now press 1 to find select stores in your area. As for the food we have growing already, I'm going to show you around a little bit. This patch right here obviously is onion. You can see it's coming up with its buds. And we also have mint. About three or four different species of it. Scattered around all over the place. Mint is very healthy for you as well, but you have to know how to eat it. You can't just pick the leaves and eat them. I mean, you could chew it and suck the juice, but you can't just eat it. Not that I've ever heard of anyway. You either have to extract the essential oils from the mint plant, or you powder it, dry it out, powder it, and then you could do things like mix it in your ice cream, and so then you've got like that irony of like something that's technically unhealthy being partially healthy. Now... This right here, you might recognize it. Typical type of weed, or at least we're told it's a weed. But actually it's a form of wild lettuce. And it's called plantain. And of course we have more mint growing over here. We will be experimenting to see what we can work with as far as uh, hydroponics. And there's some more onion coming up. This type grows big, beautiful purple flowers on it. Although, I've got a second type of onion that can max out at about 3-4 feet tall. And this is it right here. And it grows a redhead on it. Um, this stuff right here is Queen Anne's Lace. And the leaves are totally edible. It's technically a form of a wild parsley. And this stuff right here is... Um, mustard garlic and these are the seeds it's growing and once its flowers are gone and it's fully into seeding um, I can harvest the leaves and dry them out and uh, make a mustard garlic powder to mix in with my food and on um, the seeds I can disseminate wherever I want to and um, when you cut them off like that then what will happen is they'll just regrow again and more flowers and more seeds you can keep that going all year because if you don't do that, then the plants will just die. Because that's kind of nature's way about it. Oh, and of course, um, dandelions are also the leaves uh, primarily. Technically, you can eat the whole plant, but um, the leaves um, are the best to harvest. And you could dry those out and make a powder. And um, that is very healthy for you and very nutritious. This right here is high sop. It grows a beautiful purple flower. Looks like it's already starting to come out. It can get up to about eh, between two and four feet tall, depending. And um, you can powder it up and uh, use it as an herb in your food. And you can even make a tea out of it. It uh, originates from Japan. And here's some taller mustard garlic. Um, this stuff can get uh, three, four feet tall if it's got enough sun. So same thing as I was showing you before. This is a taller version of it. So they could see. Hopefully I'm aiming this right. I don't know how well that got on there. I don't have anyone to play camera bitch for me right now, so I uh, had to do that one myself. And we got more of it growing there. And we got some back there too. And of course we have raspberry bushes like everywhere. Raspberries are awesome. They take a while to, to start the plants up, but once they get going, they are extremely invasive. 
and raspberries just rock. It's nice to be able to just come out here and pick raspberries and eat them and yummy yum. Here's a bigger raspberry bush over here next to the wild rose bush. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. There's a few other other things that we have that are edible too, but um, I don't want to make this video too too long. Um, I don't know what this flower is actually, but it's it's really cool. We uh, we got it from the forest preserve. It was growing along the uh, the railroad tracks. It's a spring flower. And then this thing we bought at Menards, this white one. That's like about as tall as me now. It's pretty slim. And we got a smaller one in here. Um, that one actually grows a purple flower. Um, hopefully now that uh, the tree is <laughs> gone and this gets more light, um, hopefully this will get bigger faster now. I guess we'll see what happens. Bye-bye. There's no point in talking about Linux if I can't edit my videos and record them. I would say the Windows counterpart would be Sony Vegas Pro. And that's saying a lot. Kaden, hi, 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 hi.